Presidents. Of sixty four presents. A play toy that video review. Stay back and enjoy the show. Hey there, once again, welcome to another Lemon64.com play guide and review. In this review, we'll be taking a look at another Ocean game, and this time it's Combat School, published by Ocean and released in 1987. In Europe and Japan, this game was known as Combat School, and in the US and the rest of the world, they saw this as Boot Camp. I originally had this game on the InCrowd compilation pack, from Ocean, you might remember that with Target Renegade, Grizor, Koinov, Barbarian, and The Last Ninja by System 3 for some reason, and the ZX Spectrum users even got Crazy Coins with that pack. As usual with these C64 tape games, one of the best aspects is the great loading music. Dave Collier began on C64 with Gilligan's Gold for Ocean in 1984, before moving on to Yi Har Kung Fu in 85, Green Beret in 86, along with Rambo 2, Rambo First Blood Part 2 there in 86, and also Terra Cresta, and then he moved on after this to Arkanoid in 1987, Target Renegade in 88, and Dragon Ninja there on the 64 in 1989. He was aided in this game by Alan Short, who basically started with Athena and a very poor ocean conversion of the Atari classic Mario Brothers in 1987. The graphics were created by Simon Butler, who also did the graphics for Shadowfire in 1985, Highlander in 86, Basketmaster and Legend of Cage in 1987. And the music, well, Martin Galway, he also created Rambo 2 and the classic Cosmic Bakery themes, as well as the Ocean Loaders, which you're hearing at the moment, and Whizball. Martin Galway has still continued in the business, first of all working for the Ultima series and also the Wing Commander series, and he's actually still working on Star Citizen, which is an elite type game due out there in 2015. So if you see Star Citizen, it contains great music by Martin Galway. You can say many things about Ocean Software, but one of those isn't that they didn't provide great polished introductions to their games. And already the player is anticipating a huge battle with that great music and that tremendous loading picture. So let's, without further ado, continue and speed up this loading process and let's check out this game itself. Ocean Software were famous for trying to get hold of movie licenses and in this case it's an arcade conversion. The Konami 1987 arcade original was actually inspired by the movie Full Metal Jacket by Stanley Kubrick which came out in 1987. So Ocean once again trying to collect those movie tie-ins as much as possible. From the 
title screen, we can select either a one player or a two player game, and if player two presses their fire button, that will enter two player mode. The first event of the seven is the assault course, and as you can see, I probably had my joystick in the wrong controller port, and so I started the two player mode instead. Let's see if I can swap those controllers over there. By pressing fire, we can jump. And you can even hear a sound effect when we land on the ground there. But by waggling the joystick furiously left and right, we can actually build up our power. And when we get to one of these walls, we can press the fire button and hopefully hop over that. As easy as that within the time limit. If we can't, then unfortunately we only have one life and we'll lose it and so it's all the way back to the beginning of the game. Now we know how to do the first level, let's press fire again and let's try that again. And just look at that, even from the go, the computer there is faster than we are off the line and that puts us behind in the race. Yes, you have to start waggling that joystick furiously from the very beginning of the level, even before it appears on screen. And you can see I'm on the last wall while the computer is already on the climbing bars. So I'm having to waggle my joystick furiously now to try and catch up. And we made it! first section is not easy and it can really put off the casual player by all that joystick waggling. Well, let's move on from the assault course, or the obstacle course as it calls it, and onto the firing range. And here you'll see me pressing fire on a normal fire button joystick, trying to destroy a few of these targets. At this stage the score doesn't matter, but the targets count. You can see on the bottom corner there, that will count up. And we have to score those targets to qualify. If we can, we'll move on, and if we can't, then we'll lose our one life again, and we'll be booted out of the boot camp. So, you can see already, this game follows a theme of the combat genre, in a similar style to the Epics games and the Summer Games type games. And so, unfortunately, in this case, we didn't make it, and we blew it. So let's try again, and instead of playing through the first level, let's skip forward in the video and let's try again with that firing range. And this time, let's use the automatic fire button on the zip stick. Uh, let's try and demolish this with auto fire. As you can see, even with auto fire, sometimes it's not easy. And unless the player has mapped this level to memory, they won't be able to move from one to another very quickly. And without the auto fire, they will have to be pressing fire very rapidly indeed. In this round, we need 35 targets, and once we've made those, then we get to progress on to the next one. Lemon64 website, some reviewers said that they could only get as far as the Iron Man race, and that's as far as they ever got with this entire game. In the Iron Man, all the player has to do is to waggle the joystick forward and backwards very quickly to build up speed. They can also progress by moving the joystick left and right to avoid obstacles, and by pressing fire button there you can see I'm jumping over a few boulders and a few pools of water on the floor. And pressing fire we can jump into that river, Again, backwards and forwards to maintain some kind of progression and speed and maintain that rhythm across this water. And if you can't, you can root out into that boat and if you run out of time, you won't make it. That means we have to go back to the beginning and try the game all over again. So once again, let's skip the obstacle course and let's fast forward through this firing range and let's see if we can take on the Ironman race and get any further with this game. 
the great music and sound effects which accompany this game at every stage certainly help the atmosphere and so let's move on to the third round of the Iron Man race and again as soon as you see that screen appear or before well, that joystick up and down and then simply avoid all the rocks on the level jump over all these pools of water do not get stopped on the grass and hopefully you won't collide with much and survive in the water there is also rocks and there is a dead end there but luckily we can swim around that and you have to collect the boat otherwise you will not have time to complete this level and oops, I hit a log and fell out of the boat there. But let's reach the other side, and with virtually no seconds remaining there, we are across the line. As you can see, the graphics on all these different levels are reasonably well drawn, especially for a Commodore 64, and they have that ocean platoon kind of colour scheme, which made those great combat games like Green Beret so popular. Combat School has a great polish, and the music and the sound effects really add a lot to that, and everything moves really smoothly and fluidly. Unfortunately, the programmers have forgot one vital element, and that is in the area of gameplay. Yes, on the second firing range we have to score 50 targets, as you may have seen in the introductory screen. 50 targets, that means you have to have memorised this level inside out. And uh, you can see I am now playing this with the auto fire again. And even though I'm trying to memorise this level, basically you have to hit virtually every single target, otherwise you will not make it in this game. The very fact that we only have one life means that's a very daunting challenge having to replay all that joystick waggling of the first level means that this game is often labelled as a joystick killer. That means on the playability stakes, Ocean basically blew it. These levels are only possible with auto fire and if you've got them memorised to an absolute T, and you can see there I am letting one tank go, you have to blow up virtually every single tank in this level to even stand a chance. The score counts for nothing, and if you stand in the right place, then you'll score, and if you don't, and if you can't memorise these levels, then you'll be nowhere. And so these event games are more like formula games, and if you've memorised that formula, then you can progress absolutely no problem. And we lost the next round already, and well, that's another unfairness in this game. Luckily, we still qualify for the next section, even though we failed the arm wrestling, and in this firing range we have to hit the specific targets, and obviously the guys there, which look like spy v spy guys, you have to avoid those and don't blow those up. So yet again you have to have memorised this level, and you have to have very fast joystick coordination, very fast fire button and also it doesn't give you enough time to select those you have to have memorized this and got this to perfection otherwise you simply will not have enough time to collect enough of these 30 targets to make that quota let's try that again wild the joystick left and right furiously and you'll win so just like level one the player has to start waggling before the screen has even appeared to stand any chance of completing the game. Let's move on to the third firing range and it won't surprise you to note that I've never actually seen the final fight with the instructor and you can see I've had to cheat already with the auto fire so it doesn't seem possible without sheer dedication and that's one of those drawbacks of this game and ocean games are sometimes unfair I don't think Batman the movie was particularly unfair, but some ocean games play unfairly, and this is definitely one of those. So unless you have played this to perfection, and know you cannot practice these like the Summer Games series, you have to have gone through the whole thing, and you have to have learned all the tricks one by one, and knowing when to fire and when to pull left and right there, look at that directly on the target, and the target disappears before you even have time to press fire, 
and that, to my mind, ruins the playability of this game. I have never completed this game, and this is as far as I've ever got. It's very difficult, even though it's based on a popular movie license, it wasn't actually tied into Full Metal Jacket, and as far as an arcade conversion goes, well the arcade version was tough enough. So perhaps in that respect, perhaps the ocean programmers of this game made the conversion a little too close to the Konami arcade original in terms of difficulty, and that's enough to put off the casual player. Taking a look at the scores, Commodore Force gave this 69%, the Lemon64 website gave this 76 Commodore User gave this 80%, Ace gave it 82%, CMBG gave it 90%, and Zap gave this game 91%, which gives it an average rating of 8 out of 10. Thank you for viewing the Lemon64 Play Guide and Review.